just finally getting back home it is 12 47 a.m right now um summer slam is in the books this year and i must say i enjoyed myself man i had a great time today with you guys in the stream in the clutch page with the homie chiseled adonis as well shout out to him flying all the way down to houston to be a part of this we had a real good time on the stream man and um him reaching 700k subscribers is just amazing and the undisputed in the clutch world heavyweight champion he deserves that championship belt uh it was dope to give that to him because he is a in the clutch member through and through and you know and part of him reaching 700k subscribers we had a great time tonight man we got a lot to talk about a lot to discuss i actually took notes this time because i really wanted to kind of talk about the highlight stuff highlights of each match and things that i remember so i was trying to take notes through and during the show as much as i possibly could and i'm gonna probably try to do that some more so i don't forget as you know the important stuff that happened on the show but we got a lot to talk about got a lot to talk about man SummerSlam was fantastic hopefully you guys enjoyed it all right let me take these these shades off man and let's get into this um uh, uh my thoughts and opinions on SummerSlam this year man it it was fantastic so we're gonna start with opening up the show logan paul versus ricochet and i was looking forward to this match they had been building this up um you know uh logan being very disrespectful and both the paul brothers won tonight um uh, uh jake defeated uh uh nate diaz in a unanimous decision that that fight was uh um not worth uh paying for for pay-per-view so whoever bought that jake versus nate diaz fight you got scammed uh but both the paul brothers won tonight and um i'm gonna you know go through some of the notes that i had to talk about like i said i was looking forward to this match logan had definitely been disrespectful to uh to ricochet leading up to it and they have been kind of teasing and setting this up so through the beginning of the match ricochet is pretty much putting over logan you know logan's out here hitting a lot of moves ricochet's selling for him so you know trying to kind of get him over Logan using other wrestlers' moves is is quite entertaining because he actually does them pretty well. You know him using uh, the the buckshot lariat. You know the frog splash, a uh, frog splash. Uh, I think he ended up using a running power slam, like using other wrestlers' moves or just other moves in general uh, to add to his arsenal. Is actually kind of refreshing to see. Like every time he has a match, he adds a different move, something that he's learned. So I can appreciate that. Looks good out there in the ring. Doesn't look lost or whatnot. Um, uh, what I called it the 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 people's moonsault because he ran the ropes like the rock would and instead of doing the elbow ricochet hit the people's moonsault i call it the people's moonsault because it was dope just to see him run the ropes crowd was loving it hit the moon the standing moonsault and that was a thing that they were doing throughout the match like ricochet would hit a standing moonsault and go for the pin and the same would uh logan paul he would try to hit a standing moonsault himself and go for the pin so i like that they were showing their acrobatic abilities um there was a, a another botch it was uh they were supposed to do a spanish fly from the uh the ring apron all the way down to the floor but when they did it they kind of fail a little bit like they didn't completely fall you know what I'm saying they were supposed to land it together but they kind of fail or whatnot um but they were able to recover it. They did a, a standing Spanish fly uh, onto the floor. Uh, Ricochet did. Um, so that was a nice recovery. Once again, it's, it's crazy how so athletic they are. That Even though it was a botch, they still was able to recover it. And this was a really good move by Logan right here. A buckshot lariat from the ring to Ricochet outside the ring. So he's in the ring. And he has a buckshot lariat to um uh, a ricochet outside the ring i love that move that was nice nice little variation that he did there crowd really into this even though logan's getting booed out the building crowd is really into this then the neck breaker from the top rope from ricochet 
uh to um logan that was a beautiful spot look very painful uh beautiful frog splash from ricochet from across the ring that was uh also another uh, was it ricochet i want to say um no i think that that wasn't ricochet that was actually um that was logan who hit the cross the ring ricochet laid out he hit the frog splash to um uh, ricochet that was another good one um and then of course there's some shenanigans that i stopped taking notes at this point because i'm invested in this match so i forgot to take notes from this point on but someone ends up giving logan uh uh the brass knucks because uh ricochet tries to go uh for his 630 or whatever i believe that's what it's called and he misses it Obviously, Logan moves out the way because he's trying to set, you know, he has set it up. Logan goes to the, you know, kind of rolls, but he's still in the ring like at the edge. And somebody hands him brass knucks. I don't know who it was. Maybe you guys know somebody from his team or whatever. Hands him brass knucks. And uh, Logan proceeds to clock <laughs> Ricochet. Ricochet sold. He just body went limp. And one, two, three. That was it. And they kept cutting back to Ricochet's fiance, the ring announcer um and obviously she you know they they you know she had to announce that logan paul won and logan wanted her to announce it again obviously she didn't she was selling it her lip was you know quivering concern for ricochet i do appreciate that i do not think this feud is over just the way it ended did not think this feud was over but logan needed that win got some good heel heat hopefully they you know what i'm saying continue this feud going into the the next couple of pay-per-views or whatnot we'll see how that goes out uh goes um moving forward but logan definitely needed this win um and the right person won very good opening match this was matching the night up until certain matches happen later on we're gonna talk about that but very fun match so right now we get to the meat and potatoes cody versus brock lesnar i was looking forward to this match um, this is uh, actually, uh, I believe this is Chisel texting me right now in the group chat. Uh, letting them know I made it in. Doing this live, man. Hey, that's what your friends do. Making sure that you get home safe. It is pretty late over here. All right. So, the match I've been looking forward to. The match I've been concerned with. How they were going to do this. And I'm going to talk about it once we go through some of the highlights. Um, so... Cody uh, attacks Brock Lesnar from behind. Like, they're, you know, they're, they're doing their little entrances or whatever. Brock turns around and Cody blasts him, paws from behind, and the brawl ensues. And then, at this point, it becomes the Brock show. It, it, I was hoping this match had a stipulation. It should have had a stipulation of some sorts just to freshen it up. But it becomes uh, the Brock show. At this point, Cody's just getting tossed around. Um, Brock throwing Cody over his shoulder like he was a joke. It was one spot. It wasn't even like a suplex. He just kind of tossed him over his shoulder and he just crumpled. And I'm just like, oh man, this is this is this is looking rough for Cody. You know what I'm saying? This is this is not looking good for my boy. Uh, at this point, I wrote Cody was getting destroyed because he was. He was essentially just getting bodied out there, and at the the overall theme of this match was Brock destroying him in the ring and then kicking him out the ring. And then Cody trying to beat the 10 count to get back in the ring. That was the, pretty much the theme in this match. Cody gets in the ring, gets beat up, get kicked out. Cody beats the 10 count, get back in the ring, get kicked out. Cody beats the 10 count again, barely each time he's slowly, um, barely beating the 10 count. Um, at one point, uh, Brock hits Cody with an F5 after he gets back in the ring. He hits him with an F5 to the floor. Brock gets back in the ring. Cody barely gets the 10 count. So, Brock said, all right, bro, you, you just haven't learned your damn lesson. So, he proceeds to kick him out the ring. Hits him with an F5 onto the announce table. The announce table is already destroyed. Second match of the show. Cody barely gets the 10 count like he had to use the announce uh announcer's chair to get the 10 count barely gets it bro 
Now, the crowd is behind him, of course. They're, they're, they're chanting Cody. Brock's like, what I got to do to, to, to get this guy out, you know, get, you know, get this guy out of here. Cody was getting pretty much cooked at this point. Um, let's see. Now, here's an interesting thing. So, Brock comes out, back out there again. He kicks him out the ring again. Brock comes back out there. Cody gets some momentum. He pushes him into the ring post. Pushes him into the ring post, shoulder first a few times or whatnot. Now, here's a very weird thing that they kind of just let fly, which I really wish they would have made this a no DQ match. And you can say it's nitpicking, but I'm just going by the rules. Isn't using the steel steps a disqualification? Because Cody picks up the steel steps and uses them, hits Brock Lesnar with them. And I'm like, Shouldn't the match be over here? He just got disqualified. Ref looked at it, but she was like, you know, maybe the ref was showing discretion. Like, bro, Cody, you've been getting beat up, so screw it. Go ahead. I'll give you a freebie. I don't know. Y'all let me know down below. Shouldn't that be a DQ? But that's neither here nor there. Ref just said, fuck it. You need help, my boy. So I'm going to let you get that get that in. So we end up going. There's a, a, a particular spot, as we've seen from uh I want to say their um uh backlash match the uh top turnbuckle spot Cody grabs it as he's getting suplexed into oblivion so the top turnbuckle in the corner is being exposed so you know that's going to play into a factor later on in the match then we get into the Kimura lock spot um by the way Cody's mom was there uh again at the show so he's writhing in pain trying to get to the ropes you know we've seen this spot before he finally gets to the ropes barely gets there or whatnot um and then at that point Brock's getting frustrated he's getting frustrated he's trying to figure out how the hell is he gonna put this guy away ultimately Brock ends up getting pushed into the top exposed turnbuckle chest first not at first didn't blade or anything like that and then cody proceeds to put him in the kumora lock which was actually quite entertaining to see obviously brock was able to fight out of it so there's a, a one sequence where brock is trying to hit the uh the f5 and then cody uh ends up turning it into a crossroads and then another crossroads. And then one more crossroads for good measure. And one, two, three. And he beats him. Crowd goes crazy. We go crazy in the in the uh in the uh in the live stream. We had, it was fun. I was like, all right, cool. I'm okay with that. You know, Cody, you know, finally had some fight. You know, he he charged up his his uh Cody powers and he was able to overcome the beast. All right. I knew something was going to happen because obviously Brock, you know, he's still selling it, but he's still in the ring. He didn't leave. Cody is, you know, holding his arm. You know what I'm saying? He's looking at Brock. The way they set up the camera, like something about to happen. Brock gets up and gets face to face with Cody. Cody's like, hey, bro, I already beat you. It's done. And all of a sudden, he ends up shaking his hand. Brock Lesnar ends up shaking his hand and then pretty much starts endorsing him, raising Cody's hand like, this is the guy. Yeah, cheer for him. This is the guy. Now, at that point, I was confused. We all were confused, me, Chiseled, and Dub. We were very confused by this only because of how brutal Brock has been to Cody for no apparent reason for the past few months. Now, I get it. I know some of y'all going to be, oh, you're nitpicking. I saw some of you guys, oh, stop complaining. It's my job to voice my opinion. I get it. I know why they did it. And apparently this was not planned. This was not planned by WWE. Apparently Brock went off script to do this. And, hey, if Brock want to give him an extra endorsement, I'm okay with that. That's fine. That is cool. Okay. Cool. That's awesome. It's just... The story that we've been told for the past few months doesn't line up with the Brock Lesnar we just got at the end of this match. That's my only thing. This feud has literally been Cody trying to survive Brock Lesnar and overcome him only to finally overcome him. And now it's like, ah, you're not such a bad guy. That's my only thing. Like I said, I get it. They're trying to push him as 
This is the guy you should be rooting for. All right, cool. And there's a way you can book that where it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? But once again, for Brock to have been brutally attacking him for months and then finally when it's all said and done. All right, man. Fair play, my boy. You know what I'm saying? You're the next guy up. I believe in you. Everybody cheer this guy on. It just comes off force. So I know I'm going to have some people in the comments. Oh, you're tripping. It's not that serious. That was cool that Brock did that. Yes, in a vacuum. Yes, that was cool that what Brock did. If that was just him doing it on his own, no one else in the back telling him. But at the same time, at the same time, I got to call a spade a spade. The story behind it literally makes no sense. He's been beating the brakes out of you for months, and now all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, this is a passing of the torch moment. The passing of the torch moment makes sense if there's been that mutual respect between competitors. You know, this is not a mutual, it hasn't been a mutual respect until now. Brock has literally just been trying to end this man's career down there. But nevertheless, the right person won. It was an okay match, in my opinion. That my favorite match from these guys was at Backlash. That match was fucking fun. You know, obviously, Blood being involved in their first time really going at it. I enjoyed that match um, for me personally. This one, to me, it was more or less the same that we've gotten from the their other matches. You know what I'm saying? Um, this one was okay. To me, it was my least favorite out of their three. But the right person won. It was, it was, it was fun. I enjoyed myself for the most part once things started started going the right person won. Um, but other than that, that's my only nitpick. It's like, ah, uh, that ending seemed kind of forced, but if Brock wanted to do that for him, fine. It is what it is. Now let's see where Cody goes from here because this is going to be important. His next feud has to be something that fans can, you know, really sink their te teeth into because we go from Brock, it got to be something good. So we'll see what his next fruit, uh, feud will be, and uh, um, we'll go from there. So next was the uh, Slim Jim Battle Royal, man. Um, honestly, we all know who we wanted to win. Uh, LA Knight had a fantastic reception from the crowd. Crowd went crazy for him. Anything LA Knight did um, was immediately cheered him eliminating bronson reed by himself got a huge pop him eliminating anybody had a huge pop man um not it's not much really talk about this it's a battle royal um towards the end it definitely did pick up the match uh with the competitors that was left i think it was chad gable who had a great showing too as well uh sheamus was left um who else was left? Sheamus, AJ Styles, and uh, at one point, um, Karrion Cross was left at one point. And then he, Karrion Cross ends up getting eliminated. Um, when uh, The Miz got eliminated by LA Knight, crowd went crazy for that too. Obviously, Karrion Cross cost AJ Styles to get eliminated. They're going to set up, they're continuing their feud going on. And um, ultimately, it came down to to Sheamus and um, L.A. Knight and L.A. Knight tossing out Sheamus, man, and getting a huge pop and winning the Slim Jim Battle Royal, you know. And I know Sheamus has been voicing his opinion on how he's been feeling like he's been utilized. And, you know, ever since he, you know, had that great match at Clash of the Castle with Gunther, he felt like he hasn't been utilized properly. And I can understand that. I can definitely understand his uh, gripes. Maybe they, they have something for him going forward, hopefully. But right now, it's LA Knight's time. LA Knight uh, throwing over Sheamus. Huge pop. Everybody went crazy. We got what we wanted. Now, capitalize. Get this guy the United States Championship at some point. Something. He, he needs the United States Championship. Needs more wins under his belt. Let's keep pushing this guy, LA Knight, super over, man. All right. Now we got to talk about, uh, who easily the worst match of the night. And I was hoping it wasn't going to be, but this was not good. Shayna Baszler versus Ronda Rousey. Easily. Honestly, I, I said this before the pay-per-view that I, I didn't really care for, for, um, for Trish. And Becky to be on the show. 
because I was I was hoping maybe Shayna Ronda this feud is pretty personal even though it just you know they kind of sprung it upon us they could get something good out of it I'm not even gonna hold you I still even though I don't care for Trish and uh, Becky I would prefer that have been on the show in hindsight if I would have known this I would have put that on the show because this match was not it bro MMA rules, anything goes. The only way you can win is by knockout or submission. This was not good. The crowd was chanting boring. The crowd was dead. They went from a high to a low. There was a one brutal knee that uh fucking Ronda hit on, on Shayna. I mean, it was a legit knee. Like her cheek was all busted open, like red and busted open. Brutal looking knee, but no one cared. I don't even think I took that many notes. Yeah, I didn't really take that many notes. The only thing I said, the crowd was chanting boring and this match should have been better. That's my notes. Dead ass. That's what I wrote. I didn't care. I, I don't I don't know. Like they were throwing some stiff shots, but no one cared. And I think the problem is no one had a chance to really get into this feud. So because no one had a chance to really get into this feud, it didn't work. Like, Shayna, yes. Shayna ends up defeating Ronda Rousey. He choked her out. All right, cool. But is she going to really benefit from this? The only reason why I was looking forward to this match because I'm like, they could put Shayna over and she can really benefit from this. I don't know if she benefits from this because this match was awful. It was boring. Completely boring. Sleeping, deucing, get this off my show, boring. And the reports are saying... This may be, uh, that may have been Ronda's last match going forward. And if that's her last match in WWE, good God. I don't know what they do with Shayna. Because Shayna don't look good in this either. Because this match was not good. Damn, I don't know. I don't know. Oof, nah, that, 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 was a, that was an unfortunate one. And I was rooting for them to have a, a solid match. I didn't think it was going to be match of the night. But I was hoping it was going to be better than that. And, uh, yeah, that, that shit was not good. <laughs> All right, let's get into uh, Gunther versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. Now, I was expecting this match to be matching tonight. Fortunately, it wasn't, in my opinion, but it still was a good match, and I definitely took some notes here. Uh, the Gunther uh, hit a back body drop uh, to Drew uh, on the edge of the steps early in the match and just kind of, you know, flipped him over. Uh, looked pretty brutal. Drew selling it. Well, you ain't got to sell it. You know, he was he was definitely in pain. But the thing about this match, Drew was showing his resilience throughout it. Even though Gunther was hitting him with chops and the chops were up plenty, he was showing his resilience. He would get back up. I think he hit him early with uh with the power bomb. And he got right back up like it was nothing like I'm 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 not the one y'all like I'm, I'm different from the rest of these guys you have fought we have fought it before I'm I'm bringing a fight the trading the chops was pretty cool crowd was definitely getting into it they were laying into him both of their chests were red uh the crowd started to pick up the energy midway through the match because match started off pretty slow they started to pick it up um I want to say towards the end of the match Drew looks like he's about to get the upper hand. It was a it was a close near fall at one point. I stopped taking notes at this point because there definitely was a close near fall. I think Drew ends up hitting the Claymore kick or whatnot. And then he hits um uh, um uh, I believe he hits Gunther with the power bomb as well for the two the uh, the close near fall. Like I said, at this point I stopped taking notes because I was so I was invested crowd chanting this is awesome. We get to the top rope or whatnot. Drew puts uh Gunther on the top rope. Looks like he's about to do something up there. And then all of a sudden, uh, he ends up, uh, Gunther ends up pushing Drew onto the, the, the top rope. He gets hung up on the top rope. Well, now he ends up falling. Gunther does a dive. Ends up hitting with the power bomb, I believe. Um, and that's it. It was a one, two, three. He pretty much beat him clean. After that, that mishap, after uh, Gunther pushed him, had that mishap on the top rope, which is legal. He ended up pinning him clean. And some people are saying, well, it's semi-clean because he pushed him off the ropes. Well, I mean, 
If you're up there on the ropes and I'm your opponent, heel or face, I'm going to push you and get hung up. He beat him within the rules. I was expecting maybe Gunther was going to cheat, but no. He beat Drew McIntyre clean. One, two, three in the ring. Beat him clean. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, I was not expecting that. Fun match definitely picked up. Um, I definitely did uh, enjoy uh, the... The ending of the match, the highway, everything played out. I don't know where they go with L.A. Uh, not L.A. Knight Gunther, but yeah. He beat Drew clean. Do we get a rematch? I don't know because that's kind of definitive win there. I don't know. I don't know. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Does Drew bring up a, you have to push me off the ropes? But that's, that's legal, so I don't know. Now, this match right here, definitely. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor for the WWE World Heavyweight title. This was, up to this point, match of the fucking night. I definitely took notes for this match. This was good. Oh, this was good. So, um, let me get right into this. Finn, uh, I, we was actually trying to fix up the stream at this point. So, when we came, we was watching it, but we weren't. I wasn't taking notes. We were trying to set up the stream. I believe we had ended up restarting it. That's what we were trying to deal with. But Finn um, had ended up. Hitting Seth with the same move that injured him plenty, plenty, uh, many years ago at SummerSlam, which I, I thought was a nice callback. And they were doing callbacks the entire time. Even Seth came out there with the original gear that he had when he injured Finn Balor. And Finn Balor had seven on the area where he had to get surgery, referencing the seven years he had to deal, you know, seven years removed from that injury from Seth. So they were always doing the callbacks there. And I appreciate that. So that buckle bomb that he did to 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 Seth on the on the same uh, barricade, I like that. That was good. And honestly, Finn came off during the early parts of the match before Judgment Day involvement. Finn came off more like the babyface here because Seth was pretty much antagonizing him the entire time, talking trash, antagonizing him. Like you would think, Finn was the Finn was the babyface here. Um. So I want to say Finn uh, hit the move already. The match was starting to heat up. Crowd was getting more invested. Um, once the Judgment Day came out there, that's when things really started to cook. I believe uh, Seth had hit a pedigree on Finn Balor. Obviously, Finn Balor kicked out. He actually hit the stomp on him clean, and he kicked out. Very close fall there. Um... Then when Damien comes out, Damien comes out there first. He has the money in the bank briefcase. Damien comes out there first. I, then Rhea and Dominic come on the other side of the arena. Seth sees Damien. He's on the other side of the on, on the other side while the ref's not looking. And Damien clocks him or whatnot. And then uh you have um Finn Balor trying to capitalize on that for a very, very close. He hit him with the pedigree too, which was so poetic that he would hit him with the pedigree after the Damien assist for a super close like 2.89 almost a three count beautiful near fall crowd was going crazy I was like oh because I, I thought it was over there I was like oh they're gonna win he's gonna win this way see the dissension because Finn Bauer was looking at Damien like you're trying to cash in on me and Damien's like no bro I'm trying to help you and this was the pretty much their issue during this match and I had a feeling this was gonna play into the fact on why uh, Finn Balor wasn't able to get the job done, ultimately. But at this point, there's another distraction, and it looks like Finn Balor is potentially about to win it. You know what I'm saying? Because pretty much Seth is outnumbered in this situation. It's like a it's like a, a, a 4v1 situation here. And great close near fall. Uh, Finn Balor goes up to the top rope. He's able to get uh, Seth in the position where he hits the coup de gras on him. And I thought it was over. With the with the help from everybody in Judgment Day, I thought it was over. Uh, you know, at some point, you know, Rollins is, you know, out there fighting Judgment Day members. He hits uh, Dominic with the stump outside the ring, which was beautiful. He attacks um, Damian Priest diving through the ropes. But once again, the number game, he was able, Seth Rollins, uh, you know, he got overpowered. Got hit with the coup de gras, and it goes for a one-two close 
three count. I was like, oh my, I thought it was over right then and there. Crowds going crazy, chanting, this is awesome. It was, it was fucking great, fun shenanigans going on, as you knew. So, at this point, now, Finn Balor's like looking at Damian Priest. He's like, give me the briefcase. Come on, give me a briefcase. Come on. Or whatnot. Help me out. Give me the briefcase. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, trying to assist. So, he puts briefcase in there. And Damian Priest goes to the other side of the ring. Or whatnot. And he's trying to distract the referee. Or whatever. But it doesn't work. It ends up backfiring on him. Because as he's kneeling down by the briefcase. Seth Rollins hits uh, uh, Finn Balor with the stomp. Onto the briefcase for the one, two, three victory. And Damian Priest is just looking like just disappointed or whatnot. Just looking oh so disappointed. And then Seth Rollins is looking right at Damian Priest like, y'all tried, but no cigar. It was a lot going on towards the end of this match as you expected, but the story is now there. They're, they've, they have been building it up. The dissension between Damian Priest and Finn Balor is is at a fever pitch now because now i expect on monday night raw finn balor to be like bro you cost me the match while damian Priest was like bro i was out there trying to help you is it's it's reaching to that point the question is how things will play out we will see but overall this was a very 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 fun match um next bianca belair charlotte flair and Oscar for the WWE Women's World Title. This match started off slow because you know crowd was very energetic, but boy did this pick up. There was some some shenanigans at the end of this match as well. Let's get right into it. First thing that was weird: Oscar coming out second. I thought she should have came out last since she is the champion, but that's neither here nor there. A little nitpick: Oscar coming out second was kind of kind of interesting there. Uh, during halfway through the match, like I said, it was kind of slow first, but halfway through the match, Bianca has this flurry of athletic moves where she's hand springing, flipping all over the place, carrying women like they, like they don't weigh anything. Like she was showing her athleticism and really got the crowd hype with the, her fast pace offensive moves or whatnot. Um, it increased a, a few more notches for sure. Crowd was going crazy or really livening, uh, um, she was able to liven up the crowd. Uh, there was one spot, and they were selling Bianca's knee. It was, that was the story. They're selling her knee. At one point, uh, Charlotte ends up pushing Bianca. I believe that she was on the top rope with Oscar. Charlotte ends up pushing Bianca outside the ring from the top rope, and she falls down. And it sounded kind of kind of bad, so she starts selling her knee. Ref throws up the X. They get the officials out there. And it pretty much becomes a one-on-one -on -one match with uh, Asuka and Charlotte at this point. But it's it's all the work. Because she's selling it. She's hobbling out. The crowd's giving her a stand of ovation. And then she comes back out there hobbling again. And at this point, when she comes back out there, Asuka is in the figure eight. Uh, Charlotte has her in the figure eight. Asuka looks like she's about to tap out or whatnot. And Bianca hits the 450. She took her some time because she was selling her knee. Hits the 450 splash on a Charlotte that's bridged in the figure eight. Looked pretty brutal. She's selling her leg or whatnot. So now, obviously, Charlotte knows that her leg is messed up. So she has her. She ends up getting uh, Bianca in the figure four. And then she's about to bridge for the figure eight. Then she bridges to the figure eight. Oscar was outside the ring at this time. Oscar comes back in the frame while Charlotte's in the figure eight. I mean, while uh, Bianca's in the figure eight, spits the blue mist on her. So now Charlotte gets out of the bridge. She's writhing in pain or whatnot. And then Oscar goes for a head kick. Um... Bianca dodges it while she's still in the figure four, dodges it, and hits her with the roll-up pin for the one, two, three victory, and Bianca wins the WWE world title. Crowd goes crazy. I was just shocked. I was wrong on this. I thought Oscar was going to retain. Very fun match. This whole sequence 
crowd is definitely livened up. I'm like, all right, cool. But I had a suspicion it wasn't over because it wasn't. He had uh, EO come out there with the money in the bank briefcase. She gives it to Bailey, and Bailey proceeds to beat the crap out of <laughs> out of Charlotte and uh, beat the crap out of Oscar to go in there to cash in or whatnot. But the you know obviously Bianca's not at a hundred percent. She's injured. You know what I'm saying she's not at a hundred percent, but she ends up going in to cash in. On Bianca Belair, and she hits her with her her uh, top rope move for the one, two, three, and EO becomes your new WWE Women's Champion on an injured Belair, and that's the story they're going with. Belair, she was injured; she couldn't compete in that match. For you know, she was she was at a disadvantage and a numbers disadvantage, and EO won it. And then you see. Uh, Dakota Kai um, come out, you know what I'm saying, to kind of congratulate them. So it was cool to see Damage Control all back together. I don't know if she's uh, cleared to wrestle or whatnot, but Dakota comes out there, hugs uh, hugs them, and then got EO as your new WWE uh, Women's World Champion, man. Crowd went crazy for it, too, I, and I'm okay with EO cashing in and winning. The question is what they do with Bianca, because once again, she's gotten screwed out of the title. What is she going to do? I am looking forward to EO and Bianca probably running it back. Should be interesting. But the bigger feud I'm looking forward to is EO and Bailey because you know Bailey's going to feel some type of way at some point. She's going to get jealous. That was a great co main event, by the way. Fantastic. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Now we get to the main event. Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso for the WWE Universal, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, and to see who is going to be uh, the tribal chief in the head of the table. All right, we've been waiting on this one. This is they've been building this up. This is three years plus in the making. Can Jay get the job done? Start off the match with the Roman sucks chance. It always pisses off Roman. Roman's getting irritated. Roman trying to calm the crowd down, like, ah, y'all, shut up. You know, this is tribal combat. This is, is you know what I'm saying? This is, this is about to get real intense. And it actually did pick up, and I enjoyed it. So, Roman brings out the first tribal weapon. Everything's a tribal weapon, in the way I view it now, since it's tribal combat. It's not a regular kendo stick. It's a tribal kendo stick. He brings out the tribal kendo stick and starts proceeding to beat the brakes out of Jay. Ultimately, Jay gets his revenge with his own tribal kendo sticks and proceeds to beat the brakes out of Roman. Breaks the, uh, the tribal kendo stick. Crowd pro Jay. Crowd was... Pro J, they were loving everything Jay was doing in this match as they should. It's cool to see Jay Uso at the main event of SummerSlam. That's just, just a beautiful sight to see. Roman ends up punching Jay from the top rope. Jay's going for his splash, but he ends up catching him with the Superman punch. That was a nice little maneuver. There is a tribal table on the outside of the ring or oh, whatnot. They had set that up. They hadn't really gotten to that spot yet. You knew it was going to be, somebody was going to go through the tribal table. So Roman is trying to go for the spear to end Jay early. Jay ends up, and I like the way he dodged the spear. He kind of jumped over it, not over it, like over Roman, but he kind of sidestepped him a little bit and kind of maneuvered his body over him, hits him with the kick, and then goes for the splash for a very close two count. Crowd goes crazy, as you expected. Um... Then, my boy Jay says it's time to get some more tribal weapons. Jay comes out there with the, the tribal chair, and he winds it up and starts cracking Roman with it. Paul Heyman on the outside just pleading, this is your cousin. Why are you doing this? But anytime Roman is giving out the beats, he's relishing in it. Love Paul Heyman out there on the side doing his heel-like things. Um, After that, Jay... Uh, decides, you know what? One tribal chair is not enough. Let's bring out 
multiple tribal chairs. So he just starts throwing the tribal chairs all over the all over the place or whatnot. It's all over the ring. So you know somebody's probably going to end up landing on those chairs. And ultimately, Roman gets placed on the top rope, um, the top turnbuckle. Jay's trying to suplex him on it, but it ends up getting reversed. And Jay ends up eating, getting hit with a power bomb onto the chairs for another close two count. Jay ends up hitting Roman with a Samoan drop through from the ring apron all the way to the table that was set uh, by the ring. Nice spot. Crowd went crazy. Popped for it. And at the end of it, there was some blood on Roman's shoulder. There was a lot of blood. It's tribal combat. We got to see some blood, baby. And we definitely got it. So it looked like a brutal spot for Roman. He definitely did not enjoy that. But Jay is bringing the fight to him. Jay had that dog in him tonight. Um, Jay started whooping Roman with the tribal strap. My boy Jay pulled out the tribal strap and started cracking him with it. Roman is, ah, you know, winning and ah, and walking all the way out uh, to the crowd. And then that's when things uh, definitely heat up. Unfortunately, not for Jay. Because Solo comes out of nowhere and attacks um, Jay Uso. Now I'm thinking, wait, this is tribal combat. No one's supposed to get involved, but fuck it. Solo said, I'm going to do whatever I want. So Solo ends up hitting uh, Jay with the Yurinagi straight through a random table out there by the crowd. Jay's out of it. Roman's recuperating. Jay, uh, Roman is telling Jay to bring him back to the ring. So he first he starts dragging his own brother. Then he picks him up on his shoulder like a sack of potatoes. I'm like, oh, man, Solo, what are you doing? What is going on? And it looked like they get him back in the ring. They're about to... About to try to kill this man at this point. So Jay hits him with another. I mean, not Jay. Uh, Solo hits uh, Jay with another Yurinaki in the ring. Then they setting him up for the Samoan spear spike combo. Love that move. And I knew if he got hit with it, it would have been over. But, but Jay was able to pretty much move himself out the way. And guess who eats the spear? Solo ate the spear. Roman was confused. He was like, damn it, I wasn't trying to hit him. It, that was a nice little nice little spot. Crowd went crazy for that when Jay was able to avoid that. He proceeds to pick up one of the tribal chairs and he starts cracking. Solo and Roman, who's both down, he's cracking them over with the chair repeatedly and then he he targets roman and he starts hitting him with the edge of the chair just over and over and over crowds going crazy beautiful to see jay just let the dog out and just do what he has to do to take care of business roman rolls out the ring or whatnot trying to recuperate jay say i'm not done with you yet like braun Strowman, pretty much he has the chair, the tribal chair. He's ready to crack over Roman by the uh, the ring announce or announcer area or whatnot. And that's when Solo proceeds to super kick him or whatever. He kicks him right in the face. You know, Jay is down. Now, Solo is upset because Solo just got speared by Roman. And Roman's looking at him like, bro, what's going on? And he, he Solo's kind of... He's kind of fighting back, like not fighting back, but essentially like he's like one of those unhinged animals. If you hurt that said animal, they may turn on you and then they're teasing it. They're not going to pull the trigger yet, but they are teasing it because Solo was upset. He was pissed. You speared me. Ron was like, yo, calm down. Like when you really coming at me right now like that while that's happening. My boy off camera, Jay, say, nah, none of that talking. And hits Roman with the barricade spot. He spears Roman through the barricade. The same spot Roman has hit so many people with. He got hit with it by his own cousin. So, they're both laid out. Roman and Jay, both laid out. Solo's looking at both of them. Who he's going to target? He ends up targeting Jay. Gets Jay up. Or whatever. And... He's about to pretty much hit him with a Yurinagi through the announce table, but he's able to avoid it. He super kicks, uh, he super kicks uh, Solo 
onto the table. Then he goes to a bar to the barricade and hits a splash off the barricade through the announce table on Solo. Solo's done. Crowd's going crazy. This is pretty much it. Like it's looking like my boy is about to get the W here, man. This was this was fantastic. The crowd was loving it. He gets Roman back into the ring. Roman Roman stumbles back up. Jay uh, ends up running the ropes, ducking Roman, and hits Roman with a beautiful spear. Crowd's going crazy. We going crazy. Jay goes to the top rope. He hits the splash on Roman. I'm like, this is it. The match is over. We it's done now. We know Jay's about to win it. One, two, and then a hooded figure pulls Jay out the ring. We're like, what's going on? And then he pulls down the hood and you see fucking Jimmy. And Jay's like, what's going on? Crowd's like, what the hell? And Jimmy proceeds to super kick Jay right in the face. He Throws him back in the ring, bro. Throws him back in the ring. And then the table that was set up by Roman earlier, in the corner, Roman spears Jay through the table for the one, two, three victory. Crowd booing like crazy. God damn it. It be your own family. Jimmy screwed Jay out of the championship. Roman was beat per storyline. Boy, oh boy, when I say it took the air out of, out of the arena, this reminds me of when Cody was about to win it all, hit him with the third crossroads, only for another hooded figure, a.k.a. Solo, to hit him with a Samoan spike. Took the air out of the out of the arena, bro. Now we obviously we knew Jay wasn't gonna win per storyline wise. You know, they they you know, we knew this wasn't gonna be Roman's into his feud. But I will say this. They made you believe for a second they 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 possibly was gonna pull the trigger there. But ultimately, no, that was not the case. Roman is still your undisputed champion and uh still the tribal chief. But now, Jimmy must answer for what he's done. And some of you guys predicted that maybe Jimmy will turn. A lot of you guys predicted that. Like, Jimmy's going to come back and screw him. And I was like, initially, I was like, I don't know how I feel about that. And the reason why I say that is because, storyline-wise, it could make sense. Jimmy getting jealous, but at the same time, Jimmy just a few months ago was the reason why Jay ended up turning. Because Jimmy was the one that was like, yo, you should have did this a long time ago and attacked Roman. Jimmy was the reason that Jay ended up turning. So you telling me from the time that Jimmy got injured from his own family that beat the brakes out of him, you got mad because he wants to fight on behalf of you and take the title from him? Well, he was supposed to fight Roman with, without trying to get the title? That's why he said tribal combats for everything. I got to get you multiple times. Jim, Jay said, I got to get you for what you did to Jimmy or whatnot. So I guess that's the story they're going to go with that he got jealous. But it's like, wait, why you, why you get jealous when you was the one that told me to, to, you know, snap out of it and stop listening to Roman? They were the one that put you in the hospital. I didn't put you in the hospital. Like, I get it. It can it, it, it can definitely be an interesting story, and I'm sure it will. I just think, I don't know. I'm, I'm still, I have mixed feelings about it. Because I feel like they, they could have picked a better ending involving Solo a little bit more, in my opinion. Not Solo turning, but involving Solo a little bit more, in a sense. So, I don't know. In a more, a little bit more in the sense of, Having him really not be decided on who his allegiance is with. Uh, I don't know if the rumors are true. They have been talking about this early in the year that after SummerSlam, Roman will be taking a little bit of a break. So maybe this is the feud to hold us over until Roman gets back. But once again, 
It's just kind of weird. These are the guys that beat you up. And then you willingly screw your brother and toss him back into the ring for him to lose against the guy that put you in the hospital. Unless there's more to the story and we don't know. But once again, it's just it's kind of weird what's going on here. <laughs> like, Rikishi needs to get in the, get in get it into the mix because all three of his sons are now feuding with each other. I don't know what's going on in the household. The Rikishi household needs he needs to fix that. Maybe it needs to be a tribal meeting at Rikishi's crib at the family dinner. Like, what the hell's going on with you boys? I don't know. Like I said, I got mixed reactions on it. I think it's just, I don't know, it's just a weird turn all of a sudden. Oh, after a couple of weeks of you being storyline injured for you to turn on your brother when you were the one to try to convince your brother to leave the bloodline from the jump? I don't know. But other than that, this was a fun pay-per-view. I enjoyed it for what it was. I gave this a solid 8.5 out of 10. Uh, I have definitely enjoyed the show. The main event, I enjoyed that thoroughly. One of my favorite matches of the night is just the ending kind of confusing so comment down below let me know what was your favorite match of the night what was your least favorite match of the night i think i know some of y'all potential least favorite match of, uh, match of the night uh what you rate the show on a scale of one to ten where do you think the storylines are gonna go forward and is jimmy uso potentially the most hated man in wwe right next to dominic mysterio i think we may have our most hated individual right now jimmy you're a disgrace to the Samoan family <laughs> but I appreciate all of our support road to 150k and I'm still on the speed of YouTube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace <laughs>